Hello, Twin Cities homeowners, homebuyers, and realtors. The XP Realtor David Garba is coming to you, and it is starting to get a little bit chilly. Both our temperatures are starting to cool down, but also the real estate market is starting to cool. So let's put Data Dave to work, have him grind through the data, tell you everything that's going on, and how chilly it may be getting. Let's take a look. Updating our data this month, we'll start with closed sales or demand because, gang, we do see our demand numbers getting chilly. Down nearly 14% for the year, and with just over 4,800 home sales in September, we were down over 24%, showing a much cooler demand for homes compared to last September. The reason? Mostly, it's the rising interest rates homebuyers are facing. Look, while the median price of a home has gone up 7%, the interest rates have more than doubled from this time last year, making the monthly payment on a median-priced home nearly $700 higher than buyers experienced this time last year, up almost 60%. We'll dig more into affordability later in this video, gang, but just how icy are those demand numbers? Well, if we look at the last eight years of closed sales in the Twin Cities, we do see that this is the lowest demand number in eight years. But folks, over that time, the intense demand pushed prices up 65%, and we've been begging that pace to slow for years. So do we expect the icy conditions to cause a 2008-style deep freeze on the market? Well, if we expand the third quarter numbers into the couple years leading into and then following the bubble bursting, we see that our demand numbers remain well above those numbers. Not that icy. And remember, demand numbers alone don't tell us much. We have to also look at supply. So let's start by looking at how many homes were actually left on the market at the end of the third quarter. And while the numbers were pretty much flat compared to last year, gang, we still have the lowest active home inventory of any September in 18 years. Which brings us to new listings where we see the 6,000 new listings added to our inventory was over 18% lower than a year ago and leaves us off of our supply by nearly 9% for the year. And while our magic ball number of months of inventory still indicates a seller's market at 1.9 months, it is the highest number we've seen since September 2020. Still a long way from a frozen market, but worth watching. And if you subscribe now, Day to Dave will be sure to keep you up to date on what's ahead. And that 1.9 months of inventory is why we see home prices continue to move higher to 362,000. Over 6% higher compared to September last year and over 7% higher year to date. Now gang, we get a lot of questions every month, so digging into the mailbag, and because it's October, let's answer this one. What is the scariest data that Dave sees in our current housing market? And that answer affordability. Buyer's ability to afford a housing payment. Look, here's an actual chart. It compares the typical U.S. family income against the cost of a mortgage payment. And we see for the years leading into the bubble, we stayed fairly constant as home prices and interest rates stayed constant with income levels. Then, the bubble bursts and housing prices and interest rates started to drop, resulting in home purchasing becoming more affordable. During the recovery years, despite massive home price increase, we saw interest rates drop to never-seen levels, keeping affordability in check. But this year, with interest rates increasing at a pace much quicker than income levels, we see a drop to the lowest levels we've seen for housing affordability, and that's a bit scary. Put another way, here's a chart of what the median income for a family in the U.S. is compared to the second column of what is needed to qualify for a mortgage. And you see us just slightly slipping into the red below the comfortable affordability level. But gang, as Data Dave always tells us, we need to get local with our housing data. So if we break down affordability by regions in the U.S., we see both the South and the Northeast slightly above the balance line. It's really the states out West that see the lack of affordable housing as the income needed to buy a home is way lower than the price to pay for the home. But back home here in the Midwest, we see income levels remain at levels that are keeping home payments a 
bit more affordable than most of the country. So remember, while headlines may report the sky is falling, keeping local is going to be key to stay up to date on what's real in our market. Subscribe and watch monthly to keep up to date on all our local data.